that we've talked about wound classification and dressing type separately, it's time to put everything together to talk about systematically how one could approach a wound and how one could approach treating it and dressing it. So let's do this in the form of a flowchart and go through some of the possibilities. So let's say we're starting off with a wound. How could we evaluate it? And this is just one way to do it, but this is a good jumping off point. So let's first look at whether it's infected or not. So here would be not infected. And here would be infected. Now, for every type of wound, we want to think about three things. We want to think about what's the goal of our treatment. Um, the second is how are we going to prepare the wound bed to execute our treatment. And third is, you know, practically, the practical um, side of things is what kind of dressing do we want to apply. So the goal of our treatment is going to be to lower the bacterial load. And if you might remember from the first presentation that um, an infected wound is roughly defined as a wound that has greater than 10 to the fifth organisms per gram of tissue. So we want to lower that to below 10 to the fifth. Now a secondary goal is odor control. So this is for the comfort of both you know, the patient and also for you know, um, the comfort of the providers providing care to the patient. So the uh, bed preparation is going to be, um, first uh, we are going to do wound cleansing. And uh, we might consider using an, like, an antiseptic solution. So something like a dilute iodine, or maybe a dilute, you know, chlorhexidine. But the research is controversial about whether these are um, um, very uh, efficacious or not. Uh, and also, we might consider surgical debridement. So the uh, dressing types that we're going to use, if you recall from the previous slide, um, so for you know reduction of bacterial load, we can use an antimicrobial dressing. So something that contains either iodine, so like an iodoform, or something containing silver. And for odor control, we can use a charcoal dressing. So, now that we've talked about this wound, and then after uh, infection subsides, and you, we might consider also doing systemic antibiotics, um, although this is not specific to the wound care, uh, once the infection is treated, then the wound might, you know, we can uncover uh, what type of wound it is, and then tailor our management accordingly. So, let's say the wound is not infected. Uh, I think the next step where it diverges uh, should be uh, let's ask whether it's necrotic or not. So, if it's necrotic, it'll be over here, and then let's do not necrotic. And here would be necrotic. So, the first thing that we should do uh, if we have a necrotic wound is to assess for the arterial perfusion. Assess arterial perfusion. So uh, this is very important uh, because sometimes a necrotic wound 
could happen at, you know, it could be dry gangrene. It could be uh, at the very tip of the toes in somebody who has very um, progressed peripheral vascular disease. So they completely occluded their arteries, blood is not flowing, and then they have complete death of tissue through all the toes. Um, so let's say, you know, this is bad arteries. So very bad perfusion. And this is, you know, okay perfusion. So if you have okay perfusion, uh, this could be like a necrotic wound somewhere else in the body. It might not be dry gangrene from peripheral vascular disease. This is really a, based on etiology. So the reason this breakdown is important is because if you have bad perfusion, your primary uh, concern isn't to deal with the wound. Your primary concern is to make sure that you revascularize this patient. So first, so number one is revascularize. This is a vascular surgery patient. Uh, for wound care, the goal is, you know, keep dry. Essentially, we're going to keep it dry and no debridement. This patient needs to go to the operating room for stents or you know, another kind of procedure to uh, clear out the arteries uh, in the periphery. If they have okay perfusion, then we're going to deal with a necrotic wound. So if the wound is from some, you know, not from arterial disease, if it's from, from a different cause. Um, so the goal would be uh, to remove devitalized tissue and also uh, we want to also hydrate the tissue. So the bed preparation is going to be done via surgical debridement. So that's going to be required for this kind of wound in this case. And the dressing type that we're going to use is, if we want to hydrate, the best type from the previous presentation is to use hydrogel. That will allow for moisture to permeate and to hydrate the wound. So that will work out very nicely, hopefully. So the other option, let's say that um, our wound is not necrotic. Uh, so that's, uh, that's a good outcome, but there's still quite a ways to go. So now let's recall that there's three different types besides necrotic, right? So there's sloughing, which let's do it in red. It looks like I crossed it out. Sloughing. There is um, Granulating. I'll do that one in blue. And epithelializing. And that one I'll do in green. So these we talked about as being separate kind of wound classes uh, in the first presentation, but really one can think of them as being on a spectrum. Uh, and the goal of really putting on dressings and treating them is to get the patient from one stage to the other. So for a sloughing wound, uh, let's talk about the goals. So the goals are gonna be one to remove the slot, which that was that yellowish, um, five minutes material, and also to uh, provide a bed 
for granulation to happen. So for the bed prep, we can consider surgical debridement, but really what we're going to be doing is wound cleansing. And we can do this either with saline or with tap water. Research actually shows that they're going to have similar outcomes, and they're, you know, it doesn't matter which one you use, it's really based on cost. Um, but in the hospital, if you have saline, sometimes you know, we'll be careful, we'll just use the saline. Um, and the type of dressing will depend. So it will depend on whether it's how much exudate the wound is producing. If it's relatively dry, we want to wet it, so we're going to use a hydrogel. If it's a wet type of wound, if it's you're, we're making a lot of exudate, we can use an absorbent. So, such as um, the um, alginate or CMC, CMC carboxymethyl cellulose, or we can use a foam. Foam, not written very well, foam dressing. So now that we're onto uh, granulating wounds, uh, so there's no covering over it. It's not, it doesn't have this necrotic or necrotic, uh, you know, plaque over it. It doesn't have a yellow slot. So at this point, we just want to support the body in what it's already doing, which is healing the wound with granulation tissue. So what we're gonna use, what we're gonna do here is just protect healing tissue. So for the for the bed preparation, we're definitely not going to surgically debride this because we don't want to take out any of the tissue. There's nothing that for us to take out um, that's impeding. Uh, the healing. We might just do some gentle wound cleansing. Um, and for the dressing types, we can use, you know, if it's producing um, a lot of exudate or, you know, not a lot of exudate, we can use either hydrogel or absorbent materials or foam. Um, but really, if it's a well granulating wound and we're just watching and we're trying to protect it from, um, from uh, you know, any kind of damage, uh, we can just use a low absorbent dressing. So that one would contain silicone. So this dressing will just provide a mesh covering over the granulating wound to prevent it from being tousled around and damaged. Um, so now finally, um, let's talk about epithelializing wounds. Uh, so uh, hopefully we've progressed from granulation to epithelializing. Uh, and our goal here um, is just to promote tissue maturation. So at this point, our wound is getting to be well healed. It's only superficial at this point, um, and we just want this final area of skin to heal itself and close. Um, for bed prep, nothing. There's nothing for us to clean out. There's nothing for us to disturb. We don't want to really cleanse it. We just want to watch and wait for it to um, do, its, do its job. And for dressing, here's where we'll use that special hydrocolloid dressing. So that's that thin um, piece of dressing uh, on the top of a film. So what this dressing will do is it'll um, pull out some of the moisture, but it'll keep it there to, to, to keep the wound um, nice, and, um, nice and wet, but not too wet on the top and it'll pull out some of the bacteria. Um, so that'll allow, um, every time you pull the dressing off, it'll take off some of the layer of any bacteria that might be there just to keep it nice and, um, nice and 
healthy and clean.